Welcome to the Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording at the same website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters from Goucher College. Take it away. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, at this lovely evening, uh, this presentation of Goucher College. Uh, my name is Marvin Barahona. Uh, I am one of the admissions counselors here at Goucher College. Uh, more specifically, I work with students from the New England, Virginia, uh, Prince George's County, Maryland, and Puerto Rico areas. Um, I'm fairly new to Goucher. I'm uh, uh, just a, a year in, so uh, I always like to apologize in advance. If there are any questions that you have that I can't answer, uh, definitely I'll, I'll reach out to you after the presentation and try to get you that answer. Uh, alongside with me, uh, I have Tiffany Charles, who's another one of our wonderful admissions counselors. Uh, she will be in the chat uh, answering questions for you. So if at any point you have any questions, you have any clarifications that you would like, uh, or just any doubts, just please uh, go ahead and use that Q&A uh, feature and uh, Tiffany will be there answering questions. I will also, um, at the end of the presentation, I will also go ahead and uh, answer any unanswered questions. Um, so I would like to go ahead and get started uh, throughout this presentation. So again, my name is Martin Barahona and welcome to Goucher College. Uh, so I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about our location. So we are in the East Coast. Uh, we are situated uh, in the city of Towson, so north of Baltimore. Uh, we're about five to 10 minutes away from the city limits of Baltimore and about 25 to 30 minutes away from the Inner Harbor, which is of course the area. Um, but as you can see, we're in a pretty prime location here on the East Coast. Uh, so we have access to all these great hub cities. Uh, Washington DC is about an hour away from us. Uh, Philadelphia is about an hour and a half and New York City is about three and a half hours away. So um, definitely access to all these great major cities. Uh, and a little bit more specifically about Towson and Baltimore itself. So Towson is a neat little college town because with us we have Towson University, which is a very large state university here in Maryland. So a lot of the restaurants, a lot of the shops, a lot of the cafes are catered towards college students. Um, because we're so close to Towson, uh, you can walk within five minutes and you'll hit Towson Town Mall, which is this giant mall that has a food court that has really nice restaurants, very fancy restaurants, very fancy shops. Um, so it's within walking distance and five more minutes up and you're in Uptown Towson, which is the uh, place where a lot of the college students hang out. Um, Baltimore itself is also a neat little, uh, is a neat city uh, if you've never been. Uh, its nickname is a charm city and I really do think it has a, it's a unique charm, especially if you're walking around the harbor area. The picture you see here on the right is of the Inner Harbor, which is a touristy area. So especially uh, when the weather is nice, you'll see a lot of people walking around. There are a lot of things to do. There are performances on the street. Um, if you go further east, you're hit Harbor East, which is the very nice area. Uh, you hit Fells Point. There are a lot of different neighborhoods that you can hit in Baltimore. Um, so there's never a dull moment. Um, you can explore the city um, and eat at a good restaurant. Uh, Baltimore is also a nice foodie town, uh, which, is, which is what I'm learning very quickly. So definitely lots of opportunities to kind of explore and get to know Baltimore and the Towson area since it's so close to us. Um, more specifically about who we are. So Goucher is a liberal arts institution. Um, that kind of means different things for different institutions. I've noticed that they define it differently. What I like to tell students is that we like to teach our students a variety of different skill sets instead of kind of focusing on one or two key concept areas. And I'll talk a little bit about our academics and how they play into there. Um, so we have, uh, we occupy over 287 acres of the original about 400 acres that was bought in the 1920s. Uh, and as you can see on the picture, uh, there's a lot of green on our campus. There's a lot of trees, there's a lot of grass, and we even have gardens on top of our buildings. Uh, and I'll get into a little bit later how about that's not just for show. You know, this is actually an institutional commitment that we employ in our students, both academically and socially. Um, some fast facts about Goucher College. We are a very small institution. Uh, so we have about 1,350 undergraduate students. Uh, the majority of which do live on campus because we are a residential college, so uh, it is a requirement for you to live on campus. Um, we have a we have about 700 graduate students, so we have a pretty robust program uh, graduate program for those students who are interested in pursuing their masters or are interested in pursuing professional programs. 
Um, but for the most part on campus, you'll see about 1,300 students living on campus. Because we have uh, such a small student population and it allows for smaller class sizes. So the average class size for students is about 15 to 20. Um, as long as I've been here, I've never heard of a student being more uh, in a class of more than 30 students. And uh, once you start taking your major specific or upper level classes, you know, that average goes down to about 10 to 12. Um, so with that, there are definitely more chances to kind of get to know your faculty members. And I'll talk a little bit about them and some of the great work that they do here at Goucher College. Um, so here's a look at last year's incoming class, which really does uh, mirror Goucher's population as a whole. So 40% uh, of our students do identify as part of the LGBTQIA community. 39% uh, of our students come from in-state, so from the state of Maryland, which means that 61% of our students actually come from outside of Maryland. So the majority of our students are coming from outside of the state. Uh, we have states such as Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey represented, and California actually makes up our fifth largest state population. So we do get a good amount of students from California, and I really think it does contribute to the uh, climate on campus. 38% uh, students of color, 28% student athletes, and 28% first-generation college students, so those college students whose parents did not attend college or university. Uh, we have a support system in place for our first-generation students, so they are um, very much welcome here. Um, so now I'm going to get into Goucher's academics and some of the classes and some of the things that you can expect while as a student uh, here at Goucher. So I'll talk about our Goucher's common curriculum and how um, the classes that, as I, as I said earlier, you'll learn a variety of different skill sets and some of the classes will reflect on some of the, the things that you'll get to learn here. Um, I will talk about experiential learning so that uh, you know that it's great that you are um, taking these classes, you're connecting with your faculty members, you're connecting with your students, but we wanna give you opportunities to take your uh, education and apply it to real world scenarios. So I'll talk about internships and research opportunities and how our faculty members tie into that. I'll talk about our study abroad program as uh, we are 100% study abroad as it is a requirement to graduate. So I'll talk about some of the things you can expect there and how to fulfill those requirements. Uh, I'll talk about our community-based learning office and some of the great partnerships that they have with Baltimore City and Baltimore County community members. Uh, and I'll talk about our career education office and some of the great things that they're doing uh, in reaching students to help them with what comes after the four years that they're here in Goucher. Um, and I'll talk about how they're being a little bit more proactive and searching for students instead of waiting for students to come to them. Um, so let's get started with the Goucher's Common Curriculum. So um, one of the first classes that you'll be taking is called a first year seminar. It's a seminar style, discussion style class that you'll take during your first year. Um, what's great about this class is that all the classes that you can take with this are actually created by our faculty members. So they're the ones coming up with the curriculum, they're the ones coming up with the topics. So these are topics and um, lessons that they're really passionate about. So some of the classes I like talking about involve the Latinx experience of the US. So you'll get to know about the culture, about the social impact of, of the over 60 million uh, Latino and Latinx um, people that live in the United States and their impact on the American culture, on American society. Um, and you learn that through literature, you learn that through art, you learn that through all these different mediums in which the Latinos um, have you know, manifested themselves. Uh, you can take a class on the history of puppets and, and you'll get to learn how puppets were used not only in theater, but in current day where, they use, where they're being used in movies and plays and TV shows. So if you're interested in learning about puppets, definitely check that class out. Uh, you could also take a class that's called uh, Shakespeare and the Screen. So you'll get to learn, um, examine some of the uh, attempts to translate Shakespeare's work on the big screen, on the silver screen. Uh, and at the end, you'll actually get to make your own um, Shakespeare inspired uh, webcast. Uh, and if it's anything like the, um, the Leonardo DiCaprio Clara's Name movie, please send me that link because I really like that movie. Um, so those are just three out of the 25 possible first year seminar style classes that you can take. Um, at, the, at the summer before you are enrolling with us, you will be sent a list of all the um, of all the first year seminar classes and you will choose from your top five. Uh, and from that top five, we will try to get you into that top choice. So definitely lots of opportunities for you to take the class that you need to. Um, the second kind of class that you'll be taking uh, will be called, is called a complex problem exploration course, our CPE. So these are courses that um, really try to challenge you to think of real world issues from different perspectives. So um, the classes uh, that you'll be taking here are the kind of classes that we want you to take outside of your intended curriculum. So if you're an arts person, uh, we want you to take, we would encourage you to take a humanities or a science CPE. 
Um, one of the CPE classes I really like talking about is called Disease and Discrimination. Uh, and, it and it examines uh, epidemics and pandemics throughout the United States history. Um, with that, you can examine it from multiple angles. So you're looking at this very, very complex problem and trying to examine it from, from these uh, different viewpoints. So it's, it's very, you know, we're not asking you to solve uh, pandemics, although that'd be nice, especially during today's time. Um, but we would ask you to uh, look at the sociology behind, um, behind the responses, you know, stigmas, uh, what does it mean to be, you know, HIV, they've looked at HIV AIDS in the past. So um, definitely different, um, different ways to kind of view a disease. And you also learn the science behind it. So you learn um, what a disease does to your body. What does it mean to be positive? What does it mean to be negative? Uh, you'll look at what it actually does to your body. You'll look at the pathology behind it. So it, as I said before, it's really just kind of an interesting way to examine a problem from multiple angles. And you're actually be taking two of these kinds of classes. So it's definitely something that we want you to engage with in different subject matters. Um, there are three areas of proficiency that we, um, we would like all students to attain by the time they leave us. So the first one is data analytics. Uh, and this is a recognition that data is everywhere and that um, you, will need, you, will learn, uh, you will need to learn how to interpret and analyze data. So we'll get you started with an introductory course uh, in which you'll learn what it means to analyze, to interpret, and how to use data. Uh, and then you'll take a more major specific data analytics course so that not, you're not only learning how to do it, but you're learning how to do it in your appropriate field. Um, because this is a recognition that, well, yes, data is everywhere. Different uh, careers use data uh, differently. So we wanted to make sure that you're uh, well equipped to do that in your specific field. Uh, and the same thing goes for writing. So um, I always tell my students that, you know, you're going to do a lot of writing, no matter what college or university you decide to attend. And Goucher is no exception. So um, to get you started, you'll take a writing studio course in which you'll learn how to uh, write at a college level. You'll learn how to edit, how to proofread, how to do all that fun stuff that comes with writing. Uh, and then once you declare your major, you'll take a more major specific writing course. You'll take many major specific writing courses. Even if you're doing the sciences, even if, you're to, even if you decide to do biology or engineering or something like that, you will still have to do writing. You won't be exempt from that. Uh, and with foreign language and culture, um, you know, we're not asking you to be fluent in a different language by the time you leave us, although that'd be nice. Uh, we are asking you to have a good uh, foundational knowledge of a language and the culture behind that language, which I really think is equally as important. So how many foreign language classes will, uh, you, that you have to take will be determined by how many uh, classes you did in high school and by our placement exam. We do give students placement exams for foreign language. So if, for example, you do four years of, of uh, high school French and you take our placement exam and you knock that out of the park, um, you may only have to take one to two classes. If you do, uh, you know, maybe a year of Spanish and you take our placement exam and you don't do so well, you might have to take three or four classes. So again, that kind of just depends on how well you do in high school. Uh, and the foreign languages that we offer on Goucher's campus are uh, Spanish, French, and Arabic, uh, for those of you interested in that. Um, so, um, as I talked about earlier, there are two institutional commitments that, um, we only, that we not only see in our academics, but in our students' social lives as well. So with race, power, and perspective, uh, this is a commitment that we want students to engage with throughout the four years that they're here. So there are four different modules in which students, uh, will fulfill the race, power, and perspective class. Uh, so they will examine it during their first year seminar, uh, during the first year experience class, excuse me. Uh, and they'll kind of learn about what it means to have race, you know, what it means to uh, have power and what the perspective means. Um, they'll examine it through a 200 level course in which they will take a class that's focused solely on race, power, and perspective so they can build those skill sets. Um, when students, um, before students study abroad, they will be asked to consider their race, power, and perspective here in the United States and how they might be different in the country that they're intending to go to. Uh, and then once they come back from their study about experience, again, they'll be asked to reflect about um, what they thought beforehand and then what actually happened while they were studying abroad. And um, during your last year seminar course, your last year experience course, you will, um, you will consider everything that you've learned throughout the four years that you're a Goucher. And you will be asked to think about if your race power perspective has changed at all throughout your four years or if your perspective on that has changed. Um, which is a really, I think it's a really powerful commitment that we have. And as I said, we see this in our students' social lives as well. So I would really describe our students uh, as very liberal leaning, as very social justice oriented uh, and very vocal. You know, um, in the year that I've been here, if students have, um, 
have had any displeasures or if they don't agree with the choice that administration has made, um, they are, our students make sure that um, their voices are being heard. So um, to our administration's credit, they give students plenty of opportunities to speak up and to voice their displeasures and our students have taken advantage of every opportunity. Um, so I'm not saying that every single student on Gautry's campus is like that, but as a student body as a whole, I would describe our students that way. Our students are also very eco-friendly and very green in mind. Uh, and that can be attributed to our environmental sustainability uh, requirement that we have of our students. So again, this will manifest itself in the class in which our students will learn about environmentalism, will learn about their carbon footprint, about how to better reduce their, um, their impact on the world. Uh, and then again, uh, this is something that we see socially on campus as well. So one of the first days I was here, uh, I remember seeing uh, a tarp laid out in the Mary Fisher Dining Center in which uh, a couple students had emptied out a trash can and they were sorting the recyclables that were thrown away in the trash. So they were showing students that, you know, we say we're eco-friendly, but some of you are still throwing away, um, you know, your recyclables in the trash. So it was kind of a friendly reminder. And that's something that I've seen not doing more than once. And a lot of our buildings are certified, um, are certified uh, green in terms of awards that have been given out for architecture. So one of our newer buildings, the Athenaeum, uh, was actually rated gold. Um, and we were just a few points off the platinum, which is the highest award. Um, for the uh, environmental efforts put in to make that building as green as possible. So um, again, it's not just something we see academically, it's something that we see socially as well. Um, so here's a list of our, our, our programs. So we have over 25 plus majors. Uh, a question that I get most often is, what is your most popular major? So um, it is psychology. It is our biggest department and the majority of our students end up doing something in psychology. Um, but other than that, we offer sciences, we offer programs in all different types of disciplines, including the sciences. So we do have biology, chemistry, engineering. Um, we offer Spanish, we offer international relations, we offer peace studies. So definitely programs with different, um, with different perspectives in mind. And we also offer a bunch of standalone minors as well. So any program that you saw on the last slide can also be done as a minor. Uh, one of the good things about Goucher is that you don't have to declare your major until your second semester sophomore year. So you do, about, you do have about a year and a half to think about what it is that you actually want to major in. After that time period, if you're in a major and you decide you don't like it, you want to switch, you can also do that here as well. So you're not committed to a major even if you wait to declare it. Um, we have a lot of students doing different things with their majors and with their minors. So I've seen students doing a double major. I've seen students doing a double minor with a major. I've seen students doing a triple minor with a major. So it really is up to the student uh, what, they, what path they wanna choose for when it comes to what they wanna study. Um, and on top of that, we have eight new majors that we've rolled out all within the last two years. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these majors, but I'm just gonna highlight some of my favorite ones. Uh, so the education studies major is a major for those students who are interested in early childhood education. And um, what's great about this program is that it really does focus on social justice and academia. So it's not only looking at how to be a teacher, but how to be a good teacher and working with underrepresented populations, working in Title I schools, you know, these populations that really need well-equipped teachers to guide them through the academic process. Um, our French transnational major is a really great major as well. So uh, a lot of times a French major would just focus on the country of France. Um, which can be fair because France is a, is a country with a rich history and has a lot to offer. Uh, but the French transnational uh, major here at Goucher is actually a look at French all around the world. So French is spoken in almost every continent. You know, we have French in Africa, French in North America, French in South America. Uh, and these countries have also had an impact on the French language. So in this major, you examine all the different countries that speak French and you examine through art, through literature, through their history, about the impacts that they've had on the French language. So I think that's pretty great. Uh, our professional and creative writing major is a, is a very neat major. So this is a break away from our uh, previous, it all used to be under our English major, um, but now it's its own standalone thing. So if you're interested in writing in any, at, at, at any way, so whether it's professional or creative, you'll get to choose one. You'll get to choose either to do either professional creative writing, but I've heard a lot of students choose one and then minor in the other. So if you're interested in being a writer, definitely check out that major. Um, and then a few new minors as well. So mu uh, music and religion and justice. Uh, and the re religion and justice major is really great. If you're interested in examining uh, religion's place throughout history, you know, its, its relationship with different power structures, 
uh, and its relationship to social justice efforts uh, throughout history. Um, one program that we're really excited to announce is a partnership with Johns Hopkins University. Uh, it is a four plus one BA MS program, Bachelor of Arts, Masters of Science program with their Carey School of Business. So you will, in five years, you will get your master's degree if you enter with this partnership. So how that works is that you will choose one of five categories to uh, be a part of. So you can do finance, you can do marketing, healthcare management, information systems, or risk analysis. Uh, during your junior year, you will apply for the program and you don't have to take the GRE, which is awesome. Um, and as long as you have a good uh, GPA, which at the minimum is a 3.25, uh, during your senior year, you will start taking your graduate level courses that will count towards a master's. Uh, you will do one more year over at Johns Hopkins and you will have your master's degree. So if that's something that you're interested in, a master's in business uh, with Johns Hopkins University, definitely check out that program. Uh, this is something new that we just announced and students are already taking advantage of it. So I think that's awesome. Um, so now in terms of experiential learning, you know, you're doing uh, all this classwork, you're doing all your projects, you're doing all your essays in time. What can you do with your education? So um, one of the great things that we can offer here at Goucher is connections to internships. So the Career Education Office has a job board called Goucher Recruit in which um, prospective employers can post their um, post our internship opportunities or job opportunities, whether paid or unpaid, uh, and allow students to connect with them that way. Um, we also do have a variety of different job boards that allow students to um, engage with uh, faculty, with, uh, sorry, Goucher alumni, with uh, Indeed or LinkedIn. So there are definitely plenty of opportunities to do internships on Goucher's campus. Uh, as I said before, we have access to two or three major cities in Towson, Baltimore, and uh, Washington, DC. So there are no shortage of internships uh, in this area. Um, one of the great things about our study abroad program is that you can actually have opportunities to do uh, internships while you are abroad. Um, if you are doing the French transnational program that I talked about, their you know, study abroad experience is actually part uh, study abroad, part internship. Um, so you will have to do an internship as part of the French transnational program. And you can do that in either Strasbourg, Paris, or Brussels. So you do have chances to do international internships as well. Um, uh, another great resource for internships, I believe, is our faculty members. Um, so over 90% of our faculty members have a second degree. So whether that's a graduate degree, a doctorate degree, a jurisprudence, you know, whatever the equivalent is our field. And our faculty members are very well connected uh, to their specific field. Um, I find that faculty members on Geltrus campus want to see students succeed and they're making themselves available uh, to students at all hours in the day. Um, one of the uh, professors over at the Hispanic and Latinx studies actually gives out her phone number to students on the very first day and encourages students to text her if they ever have any questions um, with assignments, any questions on exams, any questions on projects or anything they need, they can text her. And more often than not, I find that's actually the norm and not the exception. Um, speaking of faculty members, there are plenty of opportunities to do research with our faculty members. Um, so we do have a summer science research program, which includes both the uh, natural sciences and the social sciences. And um, these are programs that you can get involved with during the summer so you can research with faculty members. Uh, it's a great way to connect with other faculty members um, to see, you know, what is the research that's been going on, what is the research that is um, that you're doing currently, and what are some ways that you can build on research and probably make improvements that way. Um, we also have a lot of research opportunities for students doing creative writing. So if you're interested, not interested in the sciences, but you are interested in creative writing, we have a summer writing fellowship through our Crack Center. Um, the projects um, that have been that students have been doing here has been actually been really great. So um, this past year, we've had uh, grants given to students. Uh, one student was uh, writing a story about his family lineage. And so um, he was given a grant to go travel to New Orleans so that he could get to know better about his family and his lineage and where he's from and all that. Uh, I read about another student who was actually doing um, a creative writing project that took place in a border town between Finland and Russia. And so the student was um, the student was awarded a grant to travel to that border town so that the story could be a little bit more accurate. So definitely lots of opportunities for research if that is something that you're interested in pursuing. Um, so now I'm going to talk about our 100% study abroad program. As I said before, it is a requirement to graduate, and there are two ways that you can satisfy that requirement. So first, you can do what's called a semester long a semester experience. So you'll go for a semester. You'll go during the fall, during the spring and you will enroll in one of our partner universities um, as if you were in Goucher's campus, but at a, at a different country. 
So um, all the classes have been articulated beforehand. So those are classes that do count towards Goucher credit, you know, so you're not taking classes that uh, won't count for anything. Um, the great thing about semester loan programs is that they are, uh, the financial aid travels with you. So if you have any grants, um, our merit scholarship, any FAFSA, any state aid, anything like that, it'll automatically cover the cost of the program. If you do incur any extra fees, any visa fees, any airline fees, any, any miscellaneous fees, uh, we do have grants, we do have scholarships available for you if, if needed. Um, if you don't wanna go for a full semester, that's okay. Some students don't wanna go. You can do what's called an intensive course abroad, one of our ICAs. So those are two to three week short-term programs that usually happen in the summer and during the winter months. They are um, faculty led. So you'll be going with other Goucher students and um, you will take a class abroad, um, again, for a two to three week span. Um, these do incur an extra cost because they're outside of the financial aid window, but we do have grant money, we do have scholarships, so we do try to make that for you as easy as possible. Um, and we have programs all around the world. Uh, one of the good things about the study abroad is that you don't have to know the language of the country that you're going to. So if you wanna to go to Thailand, but you're afraid because you don't speak Thai, no worries, you can still go and you will learn while you're over there. I really think immersion is kind of one of the best ways to learn a language anyway. Um, other than that, we our most popular programs are in the United Kingdom and Australia because they speak English. But again, don't, don't be limited by your, uh, your language ability. Um, some of the, like, the programs I like highlighting is this program in South Africa, which examines social justice post-apartheid, and it is a semester long experience. Um, some programs might have, um, some majors might have programs that they may push you towards, um, but it really is up to you. It is up to the student um, in which country they want to go to. So um, if you do a major in French, if you do a major in Spanish, they do want you to go to one of those Spanish or French speaking countries. But other than that, you do have free reign in terms of what country you want to go to. Um, again, 100% study abroad, as it is a requirement to graduate. Um, back here to the United States and back to Baltimore, uh, if you're interested in community service or working uh, with community partners in the Baltimore City and Baltimore County area, definitely check out our community-based learning office. So they have both long-term and short-term projects um, that are all student-led. So all of the programs that um, come through the community-based learning office are all student voucher-led. Um, faculty members are present, but they're just there to make sure that things are running smoothly. Um, some of the programs that I like talking about deal with education, but we have uh, programs from all different types of uh, address needs addressing. So we have programs that address food need, housing need, health need. Um, one of the partnerships I really like talking about is called the Fratura Latino Learning Program. It's actually hosted on Goucher's campus. So what we do is that we invite recently arrived immigrants onto Goucher's campus on Saturdays and they take English classes um, on campus. And as I said, they're, all the English classes are actually led by Goucher students. So um, the classes that they offer include uh, conversation classes from beginner to novice to advanced. Um, they offer computation classes, they offer job advancement classes or job skills classes. So um, a lot of the times our community members will bring their children because uh, they don't wanna leave them home alone. So for the kids, we have play classes if they're too young to learn or if they're old enough to learn, they can take uh, heritage classes. So again, all the classes led by Goucher students. And as I said before, Goucher faculty members kind of walk by just to make sure everything's running smoothly, but it really, really is a well-oiled machine. Uh, we have partnerships with the Baltimore Humane Society. We have a partnership with Barclays Middle School, which is an inner city school in Baltimore City. So definitely lots of opportunities to get involved with the community. As I said before, both long-term and short-term partnerships if you're interested in that. Um, now with the career education office, as I said before, um, they're being actually a little more proactive and they're going to those um, writing specific classes that I told you about, the writing, uh, the major writing specific classes. And they're teaching students how to write resumes and cover letters in the prospective field. Because again, different employers are looking for different things. Um, and they'll also make sure that you have a resume by the end of your first year, which is awesome because I didn't have a resume to the end of my third year. <laughs> so they're definitely on the head of me on that. Um, they have different career communities in which you can engage with uh, different sectors of, of careers, even if you're not majoring in that career. So they have a business and tech sector, uh, career community, sorry. So if you're interested in working in business or in the tech field, but you don't, you're not majoring in business or in the tech field, you can still join that community. You can learn the different ways to engage with those sectors. Um, we do a lot with our alumni. And one of the things that we do is called a coffee chat. So uh, the Career Education Office invites um, Goucher alumni onto the campus to, um, to network with current students. 
So the great thing about this is that it's very much come as you are. You know, sometimes networking can be a scary word, you know, that's it's kind of uptight, uh, uptight environment. But here it's very much come as you are, come from class, come from a five minute nap, five minute nap uh, and come engage with our faculty, with our alumni. Um, a lot of these, a lot of chances uh, can lead to what's called shadow of gopher day. So um, it's, it's like take your daughter or take your son to work day if you ever did that as a kid. Um, but you can shadow a gopher in the workplace for a full day. Uh, and I think that's kind of a great way to get a feel for the office environment um, before committing to a long term internship. Because if you commit to a long term internship, you get there the first day and decide you hate it, you know, you've committed. So this is kind of a good way for students to kind of get their foot in the door to kind of peer in and see if that's something they want to commit to long term. Um, so we have all these great student center resources if you ever need assistance during time with us. Uh, this is by no means an exhaustive list. We definitely have more resources. Um, and I'm not, talking, I'm not gonna talk about every single resource. I'll touch on a few of them. Um, every student the summer before they come to us are uh, paired with what's called a pre-major academic advisor. So they will work with you um, the summer to create a schedule for you. So they will ask you your list of interests as well as uh, to choose from a list of 25 um, first year summer courses. Uh, and then they'll create a schedule for you. And that schedule by no means is set in stone. So if you get your schedule and you decide you wanna switch out of a class or switch into a class, uh, definitely contact your premier academic advisor and they'll work with you there. Uh, they'll, check, they'll check in on you from time to time during your first year. And then once you declare your major, you will do that through them. And then they will transition you over to a faculty advisor. Um, if you do a double major, you will get a faculty advisor for each major. Uh, if you do any minors, um, it is kind of up to you to make sure that you are taking the classes uh, that fulfill the minor, but you will be working with other teachers so that um, you, are, you are right on track for that. Um, if you ever need assistance during any of the um, writing process, definitely check out the writing center. They can help you there. Um, so if you have a prompt that you're looking at and you're like, I have no idea how to start this, you can go to the writing center. If you have a final product that you think is perfect, but you just want an extra pair of eyes on it, just to make sure it's as perfect in your head as it is on paper, uh, definitely you can go to the writing center for that as well. Uh, the Quantitative Reasoning Center is for those data analytics courses, so the math courses, your science courses. If you ever need assistance, definitely check out the Quantitative Reasoning Center. Uh, and our Academic Center for Excellence is a great resource for those students who want to sharpen some of their academic skills. So if you want to uh, hone your study skills, your note-taking skills, your test-taking skills, time management skills, you name it, we have um, full-time academic coaches who are dedicated to working with you through our A Center. So definitely check that out with any study skills that you feel like you want to sharpen or you want to perfect or you just want to learn for the first time, which is okay too. Um, in terms of student life, we do have a robust student life on campus. Um, as I said before, we are a residential campus. It is an expectation that students stay on campus for all four years. Um, we have uh, dorms for our first and our second year students, and we have apartments and suite style livings for our upperclassmen. Um, so one of the great things about our first year students is that they get um, what's called the first year village. So these are three brand new buildings, um, all open within the last two years and all built with community in mind. So um, each building has its own unique feature. So one of the buildings has a game room in which you have a foosball table, uh, has a billiards table, it has a giant TV so that you can either watch, um, watch movies on it or you can connect your game system and play games on it. Um, so it's kind of, uh, that's one of the features. And then another feature is um, another building has what's called a demonstration kitchen. So if you've ever seen those Food Network TV shows in which they have cameras pointed at the food prep areas and pointed at the, um, at the stove tops and everything, that's the idea. So you will have, um, you have different cultural events going into that kitchen um, and cooking dishes from their home culture. So it's a really great way for students to kind of get to know different cultures throughout their time here. Uh, we do have a central dining location, uh, the Mary Fisher Dining Center. Um, students are always curious about whether the food or not is good, and I can attest to the fact that the food is pretty good. Um, every student, uh, or every first year student does have a 19 a week meal plan. Um, if that is, and it is a use it or lose it system, I'm sorry. So uh, if you, at the end of the week, you still have meals left over, you do lose them. So you want to make sure that you're eating constantly. Um, if you don't, the, the food here is buffet style, so it is swipe in once and it's all you can eat. We do have different stations uh, for allergens. So if you have any allergies, we do have an allergen-free station. If you are vegan or vegetarian, we do have vegan and vegetarian stations. Uh, if you have uh, any kind of dietary, any dietary restrictions, we definitely can meet those needs there. 
Um, we also have a marketplace. So if you don't want to eat, you just want to grab something quick to go, you can definitely take those food. You can definitely check out the market. We also have a cafe with Starbucks coffee. It's not a Starbucks, but it does have Starbucks coffee uh, and light food. So if you just want to grab a cup of coffee and use that as a meal, you can definitely do that as well. Um, a little bit more about our student life. So we have um, different cultural organizations hosted under our Center for Race, Equity, and Identity. So this really was a center created for students um, by students. So this is created after student demand for a, a brave space and inclusive space for all students. And the Cree office hosts different events meant to generate discussions. Um, so we have students um, from our LGBTQIA represented, um, students of color, um, students from our first gen students can also work with their Cree office. So again, it's kind of meant to encourage students uh, different learning perspectives. And um, they host events like film screenings and uh, book and uh, book readings and book discussions as a, again, that's kind of a way to generate and spark discussion and learning from different perspectives, which I think is also great. Um, in addition to those six to those uh, cultural organizations, we have over 60 plus clubs on campus, uh, each of which with a different purpose in mind. So we do have a beekeeping club. So if you want to learn how to be a beekeeper or are already an expert beekeeper, you can definitely do that. We have a creative writing club and animation an anime and animation club, um, a creative writing club. We have a bad movies club in which they kind of sit around and they watch bad movies and they laugh at how bad it is. Um, so it's definitely one of, the, one of the popular groups. We have different student um, student led events uh, and different traditions here on Gautra's campus. Uh, one of my favorite ones actually would be hoppering during this time. And it's a rendition of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So um, there is a performance of it. It's a kind of a lip sync along to the movie as it's played in the background. And students uh, dress up for the event and students are actually out the door six hours in advance just to try to get a seat. There's no ticket. So you do have to wait in line for, for a seat. And um, students are you know, from three to six hours out there waiting for their chance to get a seat. Um, and I just learned the other day that there is no students uh, under the age of 25 allowed, or not students, no adults under the age of 25 allowed. So I missed my opportunity, but um, it's definitely one of our one of my favorite traditions here on Gautier's campus. Um, we also have a spring festival, which is pictured here on the left. So it's kind of an end of the year celebration. So students are released into the quad classes um, classes end early, and they're met with a DJ, they're met with music, they're met with food truck vendors. It's just kind of a way to de-stress and celebrate the end of the year. Um, a little bit about sports. So we are division three. We do compete in the landmark conference with uh, universities such as the Catholic University of America, University of Scranton, Moravian College. Uh, we offer both men's and women's sports. Uh, we offer every sport except for American football and baseball. Um, we also offer sports at uh, intramural club level. So if you wanna play sports, but are not at such a high level, we definitely have that for you as well. Um, if you want to stay active in different ways, we do have a cardio and weight room for students. We have a swimming pool for students. Um, as long as the swim team is not in there, you can go ahead and swim a couple laps. We offer yoga and Pilates classes and Zumba classes, or you can just stick a jog around campus and stay active that way. So definitely lots of ways to stay active here on Dodgers campus. Uh, we also have a great equestrian program if you're interested in equestrian. Uh, we have our stables right on campus, so it's easy access for equestrian students. And if you want to learn how to ride a horse, you can do that here as well. Um, there's an extra fee for it because it is a stable fee for the upkeep of the, camp, of the uh, stables, but um, it does fulfill PE requirements. So if you want to learn how to ride a horse, you can definitely do that here as well. Um, last little bit to wrap up my presentation. So um, every year, one year after our students graduate, we like to uh, send out a survey asking our students how they're doing and what they have been up to since leaving us. So 96% of our students are, um, have told us that they've either furthered their education or gained some sort of employment after leaving Delta College. So in terms of graduate school, we have program, we have students in all different areas of the world. Uh, we have a few students who stay local and they go to Johns Hopkins or they go to College Park. Uh, we have a few students who branch out in the United States and they attend one of the Ivies or they go to Vanderbilt. Or we have a few students who get bitten by that travel bug and they attend either London, a school in Paris or a school in Glasgow. Um, and the same thing goes for employment. You know, we have a few students who stay local and they attend Baltimore City or the Baltimore County public school system. They work as an educator. Uh, we have students working in Northrop Grumman, UMass Amherst, Washington Post. Uh, we do have a good amount of our students going to the Peace Corps through our Peace Studies program. Um, so last slide is on return on investment. So you're putting in all this money into uh, an education. What are you getting out of it? So a study was done by Georgetown University that ranked all the colleges nationwide in terms of return on investment. And Goucher was actually ranked in the top 20. Um, and this could be attributed to a variety of different things. 
It could be attributed to our globalized education. It could be attributed to our innovative education and teaching students a variety of different skill sets. Um, whatever the case may be, uh, on average, our students are making $420,000 after leaving Goucher um, 20 years and down the road. And 40 years on the road, our students on average are earning $551,000, so close to a million dollars. So definitely lots of um, opportunities to succeed and thrive here at Goucher College. Uh, and that ends my presentation by saying that we're not, I'm not the only one that thinks very highly of Goucher. We have all these different accolades from all these different organizations, including the colleges that changes lives. Uh, four out of five on the Pampas Pride Index, uh, and one of the top academic uh, study abroad programs according to the U.S. News and World Report. So that does my end my presentation. Uh, I will check the Q and A real quick. No open questions. Oh, everything has been answered. Awesome. So that does end my time. Uh, unless anybody has any last minute questions, but if not, I will definitely get to those questions. All right. Well, thank you for your presentation and thank you for joining us. Um, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at the same website where you registered. Looks like there are no remaining Q&A questions, but if you want, I can leave it up and running for a little bit longer, take it to another day. Yes, for sure. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. All right. All right, looks like there are no more questions. So have a good night, everyone. All right, good night. Thank you. Bye.